All right, well, I'm back to work on this Samurai. Um, so today I'm doing a little suspension work. Um, like I mentioned before, this is on um, Jeep YJ Lee Springs. It's just got regular conventional shackles, no missing links. Um, these are OEM Jeep Springs. Um, so they're old and got miles on them, so they're nice and broke in. Um, I built all the brackets for the front and the shackle hangers and shackles. Um, this is a Sky Manufacturing rear kit. Um, I've got the, the four leaf pack in the back and the five leaf in the front. <clears throat> this is the Sky shackle. Uh, to me, that's a nice shackle angle. When it goes to full droop and the spring you know, arches and gets shorter, I die. This guy ends up almost perfectly vertical. So you're getting the most droop out of the shackle possible. And this, uh, you know, angle like this um, helps to kind of soften the feel of the spring. Um, so what we're doing is uh, I pulled off the shocks off the rear. Um, these are FOA 2.0 by 10. Um, so that means it's a two inch body diameter, um, 10 inch travel. And you can see it's a remote reservoir. Um, to fit the Samurai, I had to add the second 90. I ordered them with this 90, um, but just to clear everything that was under the vehicle, um, I added this. Um, so the first thing we're doing, um, you see here, I got one apart. Um, where'd it go? So they came um, with uniball ends and in you know, racing and, and uh, hardcore use, this is what's normal. Um, so these shocks have about two years on them. And, you know, I wouldn't say these are wore out, but they're getting, you know, it's almost an immeasurable, tiny, tiny little bit of play to them. You know, off the top of my head, I would say it's like a one thousandth or two thousandth of an inch of movement. But when you're on leaf springs, versus coilovers, you know, this, in a coilover application, this is basically being compressed one direction all the time. And it just, that's, you know, the, the, a bump in the road will push this up and then the spring pushes it back down. So this is always being pushed on. When you have a separate spring, uh, be it a leaf spring, or if it was a separate coil spring, um, this gets pushed and then the spring is pulling it from the other direction down. And so you, if there's any play, you get that initial click, 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 click. Every time you hit any kind of a um, bump or, you know, irreg irregularity in the road surface. Um, and so what the problem was is it felt like the shock bolts were loose just driving, especially on like a, uh, if you're going slow on a real coarse road, like uh, where you can really see the stones in the, uh, in the concrete or the asphalt. So it's just real kind of click, 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 click. Pretty annoying. Um, so basically what I did is uh, I got a hold of FOA and they offer um, urethane bushings. So you uh, pull a snap ring, slide these out and put these in their place. Um, so you can see on this shock, I've already got them I've already got these put in. Um, I'm waiting on some uh, tubing I ordered. They need a uh, 5 8 OD half inch ID tubing to um, fill the gap because all the mounting hardware is designed for half inch, half inch bolts with an inch and a half uh, mounting width, which is really common in the uh, you know off-road race type shocks. So I've got to make sleeves, basically to fill, fill these in. So these, you know, have a nice snug fit and a little cushion to them as well. So that'll get rid of the noise um, associated with those loose balls. Um, and again, like on my Samurai, I have the same brand of shocks, uh, minor 14 inch travel, but they're a coilover. And 
I've never heard that noise once because again, the spring is always pushing one way on that uniball. It doesn't get pushed and pulled, it's always pushed, if that makes sense. So that's uh, step one. I'm gonna do that to all four of the shocks all the way around. Um, and then, so the second thing is, um, I've got these pulled apart. Um, so I pulled them apart, spread out the valving shims um, just to see what was in there because, you know, again, these were ordered like two plus years ago. I couldn't remember what they were. Um, and so basically it was a 10 thousandths stack on both sides. Each, each shim is 10 thousandths thick. Um, the compression side is actually a flutter stack, they call it. So you've got two hard to do with one hand you've got two of the two of the largest diameters separated separated by one smaller diameter these are real snug on the shaft so when this gets closed up it leaves a gap and so that gives it this first shim a little bit of easy movement you know it's, it's just being moved bent by itself so it's real soft until it contacts, until this edge contacts the edge of the next full diameter piece. And then, you know, it's a progression of diameters down from there. So this, you know, kind of acts like a, like a leaf spring. Um, so I'm leaving the stack alone because um, the ride of the Samurai was, was generally quite good, especially if you're driving it fast um, and hitting bumps aggressively. The place where it kind of suffered was uh, small, small movements like um, like hitting a, you know like like the expansion joints or something where it's a short, square edge bump. Um, it just felt kind of tight and rigid, and so um, this is something I've done with mine. And I called um, the guys at FOA just to kind of confirm. Um, they had me drill. So you can see you got the large holes, and then there's these three smaller holes. Um, the small holes are free bleed holes. So the oil is able to go from one side of the piston to the other without having to act upon the, um, the shim stacks. And so they came with one, and he recommended drilling two more. Um, and so that that lets the, the piston move easily through the oil um, under, you know, small magnitude bumps. Um, and these holes are so small that when this gets hit hard, you know, hitting a, a big obstacle, um, the flow limitation happens pretty quickly with these. And then, you know, all the, all the oil is gonna go, th well, I mean, not all the oil, but the vast majority of the oil is gonna go through the shim stack. So I think a combination of getting rid of that tiny amount of play, um, the small amount of cushion, and then the free bleed, I think is going to really um, smooth out smooth out the ride over the small bumps. I mean, again, I was really happy. You know, you would hit you would hit a bump at say you know ten miles an hour, and it it, it would kind of buck the back end up. Like, wow, that's kind of rough, and you. Would, you could hit the same bump at 35 miles an hour and it just ate it up. So that's a pretty easy thing to play with on these is uh, the free bleeds. Um, and again, like if it was at the high speeds, if it was still harsh, you know, that's when I would, I would play with the shim stack. So hopefully that helps if anybody has, uh, you know, take apart style shocks. Um, you know, it's a pretty, to me, this is a fun thing to do because, you know, the ride of a vehicle is really important, especially when you drive it a lot. And uh, this one gets driven on the road a lot. Um, you know, it's not the owner's daily driver, but he, he really likes driving it. Um, so looking forward to seeing what the difference is. Um, 
and, and I'm probably, I don't know, I'm gonna get the rears done and put them on. I'm probably not gonna touch the front because the front feels pretty good. And I kind of like the front to be a little more, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, tighter. Just helps to kind of control the body roll and, uh, you know, make the steering feel a little more, uh, you know, sporty and precise. So that's where we're at for today. Um, you know, luckily I've been playing with these for a while, so I've accumulated a lot of stuff parts and shims and, you know, seals and whatever. Um, if you haven't checked out these shocks, um, you know, they're, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty good value. Um, when I bought mine, they were, you know, roughly half the price of a King or a Fox or something like that. And they're definitely more, much more than half of the value in my opinion. Um, I've beat on mine pretty hard for almost four years now. And, uh, the only problems I've had have been, you know, problems that would have, uh, taken out any shock. I, uh, in a rollover, something came, a rock came through a wheel well and bent one of my shafts. Um, you know, again, that's, that would have happened to any of them. And, uh, Amazingly, the shock never leaked, even with that bent shaft. It did, I didn't know it was bent for quite a while, and it did end up tearing up the seal head um, and the wear band and stuff like that. But, you know, these parts are really cheap. And that's the cool thing about this shock is, like, you can buy every single piece here individually. So if you ever have a, a damage or, you know, wear from a lot of miles or whatever, I mean, this is really like a lifetime shock. Um, and again, for the for the cost, like it's it's pr pretty pretty killer bang for the buck. Um, so that's where we're at. Um, you know, like I said, this thing gets driven so much on the street. Really uh, striving to get the best the best ride and comfort. And uh, and honestly, just the way it was already, I would say it was one of the nicest riding samurais I've ever been in. Um, if you're not really super aware, I mean, there's a big push with Samurais to go to these uh, YJ Leaf Springs. And the biggest reason comes down to just basically the spring rate. You know, a lot of people say like the width makes them better and blah, blah, blah. It, it's the spring rate. So it's how many pounds it takes to compress that spring an inch. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but the YJ Leaf Springs have a considerably softer spring rate than the Samurai leaf springs. Um, and that's really, when it comes to leaf springs, that's a function of the length from eye to eye, um, the thickness of the leaves and the number of the leaves. And the most important of those measurements is the thickness of the leaves. So the YJ springs are really pretty thin. I mean, that's, that main leaf is a quarter inch and looks like the next one's getting even slightly thinner. Which, you know, everything has its pros and cons. You can bend these pretty easily if you uh, overwork them. But in a lightweight samurai, that's pretty, it's pretty unlikely and tough to do. So that's it for now. Um, thanks for watching. And, you know, I'm, I'm by no means a shock tuning expert, but I've done a fair bit of this. And so if you're struggling through any of this, uh, feel free to hit, uh, reach out and uh, I'll see if I can help you out. All right, thanks. Okay, so I filmed this video over several days, so I don't remember um, for sure how well I showed this, but so this little uniball sits in the eyelid of the shock and it's held in place by a snap ring. So it's a pretty easy conversion to go from um, uniballs to the bushings. I mean, the upper ones came out really easy. Once you pulled the clip, they just slid out. Um, the lower ones, being down closer to the, uh, you know, road spray and, and uh, you know, these get wet a lot more. So um, they were a little, a little bit harder to get out. 
Um, this is basically how most of those looked. They were a little bit rusty on the outside. But as far as the function of the joint goes, they were still fine. I mean, like I said, some of them have a tiny bit of play. This one's actually feels brand new. Um, like I said before, these shocks have about two and a half years on them. Um, so, I mean, they're dirty and stuff, but they're, they're in nice shape still. Um, so yeah, then you just, uh, there's two ways of going. You can lube these up and, and really force these in there. Um, or you can cut them in half, um, which is what I do. Um, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, I use a, uh, ratcheting PVC pipe cutter. Um, it just slices through them like butter. And then it gives you a nice clean square cut. And nice thing with these bushings is the, the inside spread of the bushing basically fits this jaw. So it's self-centering in these cutters too, which is cool. Um, and then I had to make up some sleeves because you know all the the mounting points top bottom front and rear they're all, they're all set up for half inch bolts um these have a, a half inch bolts yeah and then these are set up for five eighths um these have a five eighths id um a lot of older rigs will have um like a stud welded on the frame or whatever and these just slide right on there um, but if you have a bolt system um then you'll have to make a spacer so that's that um just figured i'd show that in a little better detail in case i didn't before um and then i uh you know i grease these up a little bit when i put them all together just so there's no squeaking and then uh you know keep the sleeve from rusting and that's it um to make life a lot easier um, I release the nitrogen pressure out. Otherwise, it's a real fight, you know, because these want to extend, and, and the, uh, the, the force is fairly hard. Um, these have 150 PSI in them, and uh, it's a whole lot easier. Um, luckily, I've been servicing these quite a bit lately, and so I've got my own uh, nitrogen fill tank. Um, if you didn't, you really don't want to drive with these without any pressure in them. Um, it's not the best thing to do, but in a pinch, just to like get from, let's say your garage to someone who has one, you could, you can use just shop air, compressed air to get you by. Um, very short term and I wouldn't, you know, don't run them hard because uh, moisture you know, water, moisture inside to there combined with heat, you know, when water goes from liquid water to boiling at 212 into steam, the pressure goes through the roof. Um, so like I said, that would be a very short term, get you to a motorcycle shop or someplace that's got a nitrogen fill. And then you'd want to kind of purge those out a couple times to get them, the moisture cleared out. Um, but yeah, that's it. So I'm going to get this put together. Uh, one more test drive. Make sure that kills all the noises and the ride's good. And then I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so I just got back on a, got back from a test drive. Um, after redoing the rear shocks, got them all revalved and the bushings. Um, and then put back together and mounted and recharged and all that. Um, and what a massive improvement. The uh, adding those two free bleed holes really took the edge off of the bumps. Um, big improvement. It's still, I don't know what you call it, you know, not marshmallowy, which, I mean, it's hard to get a leaf spring rig to not, I mean, uh, Leaf springs are stiff, so you're never gonna get a car to be, you know, as smooth and squishy as coilovers or something, but um, super impressed, what a difference. Um, so now, I just got this one, just got this one finished. I don't know if you can see, 
Now you really can't see, but this one's now got the urethane bushings in it. Um, these are the towers I make. Um, I got a little cutout if you run reservoir shocks to clear the hose. Um, there's enough space. I designed them to where you could fit um, a 2.0 coilover as well in the same mount. Um, my little samurai that I'm bringing back from the dead, my eventual goal is to um, put coilovers on it. Um, kind of mentioned before, I, I want to sit about two inches lower than this one. Um, so I'll probably be running a 2.0 by eight coilovers all the way around. I'm gonna do a real simple link system. It's mostly gonna be uh, for street comfort, I would say, more than you know, off-roading. I don't need I don't need two, you know, extreme off-road samurais. Um, but anyway, so back to this. Uh, so that one's done. So I'm pulling this one apart. Just figured I'd take a break for a second and video this real quick. Um, so I just gotta pull this guy off, switch out the bushings. Um, so I'm gonna take it for one more quick test drive just to see, make sure that um, replacing the uniballs took care of all the little kind of, I don't know, this thing has some rattles in the suspension and you know, I'm 99% sure it was these uniballs. Um, just doing the back, got rid of the majority of that little clunky noise. Um, and you could tell just by, just by grabbing the rig and shaking it, you could, you could totally hear it, but anyway. Get this one done. Um, and that wraps up the majority of the work I'm doing on this. Um, I'm probably gonna build a rear bumper, um, depending on timeline. Um, this one's actually got a pretty clean bumper on it still, but we planned on building something that would uh, kind of match the style of the front. Um, and bring it out just a little bit so you actually have something to step on. Um, uh, the guy that owns this has got a uh, got a dog he takes with him a lot, and it'd just be it'd be handy to be able to step on the back, you know, with the top off and get her harnessed in and whatever. Um, yeah. Oh, no, I got one more thing. I, I'm going to fiddle with the carburetor a little bit. That's, that's, that's the next thing. Probably start, start on that tomorrow. The, uh, it runs really good on the primary side. The secondary side, um, I'm not really sure what's wrong with it. Um, I've got the specs. Um, if, you, like, if you were to buy this kit from Redline Performance, um, they set them up pretty good out of the box. Um, if your motor's stock, um, which this one is. Um, so this carb was put on, you know, well before the guy that owns it now. And so, you know, we have no idea what's in it. So I'm gonna pull the top off and pull the jets out and take a look and compare them to um, what Redline says should be in there. Um, in our area, we have emissions testing. Um, and I was actually with the owner of this when he bought it from the previous owner. And he told, um, he told us that he had fiddled with this to try to get to pass. Um, and so that kind of threw some red flags for me. Um, so yeah, that's next, probably tomorrow. Get that, try to get that sorted out. But overall, this thing's, man, I'm, I'm tickled with this thing. It, uh, the ride, you know, the handling uh, with these narrow 85 series tires. Um, steers awesome with the manual steering. This thing has really turned out to be a really nice rig. Um, now with the doors all fixed and adjusted and those panels, like if this was mine, I would drive this every day. I love this thing. But so anyway, I'm gonna get this one last shock finished, take it for one more quick ride and then uh, let you know what I think. I'll be back in a few. Okay, so I just got back from the final test drive on the suspension. Um, 
Got all those bushings changed, or the uniballs changed out for the bushings. Um, front shocks put back in and recharged. Um, rides really good, I'm really happy. Um, not sure what else to say. Uh, <laughs> That was definitely a worthwhile uh, little project to do though. Um, you know, all told, redoing the rear shocks, probably about an hour a shock um, to take them apart, do the modification, put them back together. Um, I just talked to the owner and maybe one day we'll do some more work, but I'm gonna let him drive it like this for a while. Um, I don't think it would get too much more comfortable without losing um, kind of its nice feel of control that it has. Um, the thing actually drives really nice on the road. Doesn't have any sway bars. Um, doesn't really have much body roll. It really handles nice. Um, so I'm gonna let him have it for a while, see what he thinks. Um, you know, he lives in a lot more mountainous, twisty area than I do, um, but I took it on a variety of different roads around my house and uh, it works good. And like I said, if you, if you want more comfort, you're gonna give up, you're gonna give up some of the uh, handling control, you know, cause everything's a compromise. But I think, I think this strikes a pretty, a pretty good, a pretty good line between the two. So if anyone's interested, um, if they were to order this style shock, um, you know, brands are going to change, but if, you know, again, these are FOA brand. Um, it has a 10 thousandths rebound stack. You know, all the shims are 10 thousandths thick on the compression side. They're all 10 thousandths thick, but it has a flutter stack. Um, and I believe the front is the same. I haven't taken the front apart. Um, but when they were ordered, they were ordered all the same. Um, because I wasn't sure, you know, it was, it was a guess, honestly. I wasn't sure what it was going to take. It was a rough guess based off my race car samurai, but, uh, so I believe the front has the single bleed hole still, and now the, the rears have three bleed holes, um, so for this little lightweight Samurai, that's pretty a pretty awesome setup. You know, it's got a full-size rear spare, um, but it doesn't really have too much in the way of extra weight that's been added to it. Um, it's got a front bumper that's good for a winch, but it doesn't have a winch in it yet. <clears throat> and that bumper is only, you know, like 50 pounds or something. It's pretty lightweight. Um, you know, really, it's a pretty stock Samurai other than the... Uh, you know, it's, it's not cut up. It's got the full interior. It's got a back seat. Um, but I mean, to me, this is a, this is a pretty winning combination. Six, five transfer case. Um, these tires are about a 32, you know, they're metric. They're a 235, 85, 16, but it's basically like a 32 by nine. Um, it's got stock 373s front and rear, you know, it's locked front and rear. Um, I'm not sure what the miles are on it. The motor's not the most powerful, but around town it's plenty. I haven't driven it on the highway. <laughs> pretty, pretty fun little rig. I really like it. You know, one day if he goes to sell this, I am going to jump on this like you wouldn't believe. But knowing the guy, I don't think he'll ever sell it. Sadly for me. <laughs> But that's it. Um, I'm going to fiddle with the carburetor. I'm probably not going to video that because, uh, I don't know, we'll see. It's boring stuff, and uh, I'm not a carburetor expert. I'm just kind of putting it, putting it back to uh, where it should be. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions on this thing or uh, want to know any other specs or uh, things that we've done, again, they're... Uh, I don't know the year, 2002, I think, Grand Vitara wheels with a one inch wheel spacer. Um, fill in the fender flares pretty nice. 
without sticking out too far to throw it, throw mud all over the side. I mean, uh, they stick out maybe a three quarters of an inch. That's it. Pretty happy with this thing. Can't wait to see what he thinks. He was happy with the uh, the ride before, so I think he's gonna be real real surprised. Um, and those bushings did kill all of the little noises. Um, this thing actually is pretty rattle free. That's a nice little rig. Um, but those bushings, even the the front ride changing nothing but putting those bushings in it did soften the edges of bumps a little bit um being that's got a little bit of give um something not a lot of people know is the oem manufacturers spend a lot of time on the bushings um a lot of the the ride control of the high frequency bumps um is controlled by the bushings um you know certain brands uh stick with that that uh a concept or whatever. Um, I know Bill Stein does. Um, their bushings are, are built, you know, vehicle specific. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot to be had in little details. So, all right, I'm going to stop rambling on. So thanks for watching. And if you got a samurai, I hope you enjoy this and, uh, hopefully it helps any, uh, anybody out on their builds.